Chapter 1021 Golden Flying Buck Although Hansen had received many presents from the creatures of the regions he and his party traversed, none of those gifts had yet surpassed the blood fruit and dragon saliva in terms of rarity and power. Those gifts, given to him by super creatures, were by far the best. Upon nearing the exit of Ghost Mountain, they encountered another super creature. It was a giant ape, and it provided Hansen with a small wine cup. Hansen could tell it was actually a Geno item, but despite his close examinations of it, he couldn't really tell what purpose it might serve him. The giant ape also aided them in travel. He grabbed a hold of every member of Hansen's party and placed them all atop his shoulders. Then, he took off running for four days straight. The craggy slopes of the mountain soon gave way to an emerald, verdant expanse that was home to a number of horses, merrily grazing away the hours of sunshine. We are finally off Ghost Mountain. Everyone was exuberantly happy. The ape placed them down, roared at Hansen, and then returned to the mountain. Looking back to where they had spent so much time traveling, it was almost like a dream. Everything they had been through seemed unbelievable, even to Hans Sr. Ark, just as everyone was in chirpy spirits, a scream sounded from their mist. Lu Yuxuan was rolling on the ground in pain, shrieking in agony. A wound had formed on his body, as if something had cut him badly. He was covered in blood, yet no one around him had done a thing. As Lu Yuxuan screamed, he barely looked human. His body was being skinned by a phantom aggressor, and soon, his flesh started to get carved away in large chunks. Soon, it'd be down to the bone. The wounds were not fatal, though. Kill me, please. I was wrong. I wanted Wei Wei, and yet I was willing to harm and kill you to have her. Liu Yuxuan's face was distorted and covered in blood. But the torture he was now under was so unbearable, he actually wanted to die. Everyone understood what was happening. The spirit that owned Liu Yuxuan must have detected that he had left Ghost Mountain. Thinking that it was an act of disobedience, the spirit started to torture him. Linny grabbed his sword and plunged it deep into Liu Yuxuan's heart. As his life force left his body, his muscles relaxed and his face became softer. He looked free, as if he had been granted a release he had long wanted. There was no need for him to suffer. We are still the same kind. He may have deserved death, but not one that was brutally prolonged, Lin He explained. Hansen nodded. Even though he despised Liu Yuxuan and would have killed the man himself, he wouldn't have tortured him. The others, seeing the way he died, were in shock. They were eternally glad they had not returned to the shelter and submitted themselves to the command of a spirit. One day, they could have ended up just like Liu Yuxuan. To avoid his body being desecrated by creatures, Hansen torched it until there was nothing left but dust. When it was time for them to set out again, they were not too sure where to go. The only thing in front of them was a flat, plain field that went on as far as the eyes could see. So they picked a direction and went straight ahead. The horse-like creatures were afraid of the passing humans, it seemed. Before they even got close, the horses would run off and maintain a lengthy distance. After a while of travel, they suddenly heard a buzzing noise. Something gold was coming towards them from across the expanse. At first, it was alone. But later, more of the golden things appeared. After squinting to get a better look, the group saw that the creatures were golden, fist-sized bugs, and their numbers were many. More and more emerged, until they started to blot out the sun and ink the sky. But since they were gold, they did not darken the field they traversed. Instead, the brightness of the region only increased. The area became almost blindingly bright. I wonder what these things will give us. Chin Hu looked very excited. Although Chin Hu did not personally receive any gifts or reap any specific benefits, he was excited to see what new thing they would bring. But Hansen was not in this mindset. His face changed and he said, They are not here to bring gifts. Everyone, get ready to fight. No way. Chin Hu could not believe it. The golden bugs closed in on them quickly. They swooped down low and tried to bite them in a hungry swarm. With their gene locks open, the fighters raised their weapons to counter the assault. Hansen was ablaze with a red fire, and he commanded a phoenix to incinerate the bugs that were directly in front of him. But the golden bugs were strange. When the phoenix slew them, it did not respond and allow Hansen another usage. Even stranger, there was no announcement after the bugs died, and his Dongxian aura revealed nothing on those bugs. He didn't learn a thing. The group of travelers unleashed everything they had as they fought back against the tide of insects, but the enemy's numbers were too many. 
If a bug landed on one of their bodies, even mutant armor wasn't an effective enough resistance for the subsequent biting. The bugs would tear through their bodies in an instant. Screams started to erupt from the group. When Hansen turned to look at those who cried out, he found them soaked in blood. Hansen tried his best. He always did, but he knew he could not protect everyone this time. Hansen gifted the turtle armor be sold to Lin Weiwei and said, Put this on. After donning the armor, she was far safer, and she felt that way, too. The golden bugs could no longer nibble their way through that protection. But it did nothing to alleviate the enormous swarm that assaulted the rest. There were so many, it was almost like a sandstorm of the fiends. And as for how they might get out of this predicament, Hansen was short on ideas. Arg! The people screamed. Many of the bugs were attached to Wang Yu's legs, which were being ravenously gnawed. Within a few seconds, nothing but the bones remained. He collapsed to the ground. On the ground, his ability to resist was drastically reduced. Countless more of the bugs swarmed his defenseless body. He was being ravaged, and in a few seconds, ransacked bones were all that would remain. Chapter 1022 Meeting Again Hansen's body surged with red fire, and the bugs that swarmed around Wang Yu were blackened and burnt. The man had been saved, but only barely. He could not stand up, let alone fight. Chin Hu was next in line to suffer, though. He screamed, and Hansen watched as he fell to the ground. A fireball was sent his way, incinerating the hungry bugs that sought to do him harm. Hansen was managing for now, but he knew he couldn't save everyone. Thou or get these bugs. Hansen pleaded, but the baby did not move. Her eyes seemed fixed on something. Hansen knew he could escape and save his own hide, but he knew that would only result in the deaths of the people he had now spent much time with. Shen Hu, Lin He, they'd all die a gruesome death. Lin Weiwei had been safe in the armor, but that too was now riddled with cracks. It wouldn't be long before that broke, exposing her to the ravenous hordes of insects. Bauer continued looking in the same direction, not bothering to summon the gourd. Hansen suddenly heard an explosion in the sky above. A shockwave followed, almost knocking the fighters off their feet. It was a howl, and it was familiar. It was reminiscent of the howling of a wolf, but it wasn't quite the same. When they were on Ghost Mountain, the purple wolf super creature heard this sound and left Hansen and his people be. Hansen suddenly thought he might receive protection from the creatures, after the howl. But the howl, as loud as it was, meant whatever made it was close. Hansen wasn't sure what would happen next. And yet, nothing did. After a moment of anticipation, the bugs merely continued their onslaught without reprieve. It was disappointing, to say the least. But in the next second, silver lightning tore the skies asunder. Its presence quickly surprised everyone, knocking them down to the ground. As their hope had just started to wane, silver lightning descended from the sky like a river. The bugs in the path of those lethal webs of windborne fire were destroyed. Needless to say, it was shocking. Huddled together, everywhere outside their small portion of land was being ravaged by what felt like world-ending chaos. All the bugs that sought to kill them were promptly electrocuted. No way. A thought flashed through Hans Sen's mind, but it was so crazy, he wasn't sure whether or not he was a fool to believe it. There was a small shadow in the direction Bauer was looking. It was headed towards them, emerging from beyond the streams of lightning. It was a small, silver fox. It approached them slowly, with grace and elegance. No lightning touched it. It was as if the curtain of silver fire parted for its entrance. No way, Hansen was speechless. Hansen now understood why the Wolf King left them alone, and why the creatures had all started to be nice towards him. It was because something had been watching over him the entire time. Little Silver, Hansen shouted, running to greet his old friend. The lightning broke away for Hansen's approach. He dropped to his knees before the fox and planted a big kiss on the much-missed creature's forehead. Then, he ruffled the fur on his head. The silver fox shoved his muzzle towards him and licked Hansen's hands. Then, he buried his head in Hansen's chest. Maua squinted her eyes, looking furious at the silver fox. She seemed jealous that something else was obtaining Hansen's love. The bugs had all gone. When the silver fox looked at Bauer, it looked as if there was friction in both their eyes and an ignition of sparks. But one second later, they looked away from each other. Fortunately, Hansen did not notice this brief standoff. It was best that nothing spoiled the moment for him. Hansen had wanted to discard the gourd once before, and had gone so far as to throw it away. But it was the silver fox that picked it up and brought it back, 
indicating Han Sen should hold on to it. Strangely, after the occupant of the gourd emerged and met the person who had given it a father, they did not seem friendly. Hansen wished to say something to the silver fox, but suddenly there was another explosion. A giant, golden bug emerged from the ground in a haze of soil. Its lower body was like that of a snake, whereas its upper body was plated with a carapace that was not unlike a centipede. The creature's head was like a scorpion, and a stinger-tip tail swung from its back. It looked evil, like a demon freed from hell itself. Amidst the golden light that reflected from its shiny plating, the hideous creature roared. Chin Hu was grabbed and pulled across the disheveled field. As he went, soil and grass stained his clothing. After a roar, the golden bug's tail started to move. It swayed from left to right, as if it was taking aim at Han Sr. Boom. Nine streaks of golden light were cast towards Han Sen, which twisted the very composure of space. The silver fox leapt in front of Han Sen, amassing a massive vortex of silver power. It transformed back into the fierce lightning fox it could be. Before the golden beam could reach its target, the silver fox roared as a big beam of silver lightning blazed back to counter it. Chapter 1023 Attacking a Shelter Silver lightning burst out of the silver fox and collided with the golden light. Boom! The golden light was fractured, and in a second, the atmosphere exploded around them in a blinding flash. A one-mile-wide hole formed in the ground, and aside from Hansen and Bauer, everyone was blown away. The streaks of the silver fox's lightning filled the exhibit of destruction, suppressing all the golden bug sought to do. Try as it might to break that oppressive power, the golden bug could not. All it could do was flail around helplessly. The silver fox's fur gleamed. A silver aura formed around him, and it became brighter and brighter. It culminated in a wretched bullet of silver lightning. His target, the insect aggressor, shrieked wildly in agony. Lin he was frozen as he watched the scene unfold. Even Hansen was shocked. The silver fox hadn't been in the third god's sanctuary for very long, but he had already amassed a terrifying amount of power. He had managed to alter the minds and desires of the super creatures of Ghost Mountain and promptly came to Hansen's aid on the verdant expanse. Of course, this wealth of power wasn't entirely down to the silver fox's own prowess. Updated by Novelful, Calm. The silver fox had opened nine of his gene locks but he had done so through the help of other super creatures. It was through their aid that he managed to open so many gene locks so quickly, and it was how he had obtained such fierce powers already. The reason Silver Fox had received such treatment was his rarity. He had become widely respected throughout the creature kingdom, and that was down to his healing abilities. Many injured creatures had kindly received the Silver Fox's healing. He was proficient with this talent, and grievous injuries were healed in no time at all. It was that which earned him this great respect amongst creatures. Of course, only having nine gene locks open meant he could not even beat the white snake if it came down to a fight between the two. Hansen had nine gene locks open, as well, and when bringing fitness into the equation, the two were well balanced. Just like Hansen, the silver fox's fitness had not been able to keep up with the number of open gene locks. So, even in the third god's shelter, they'd make for a remarkable duo. Boom. The golden bug let out a shrill scream. It hastily dug back underground and disappeared, leaving behind stains of gold blood. The silver fox looked like a simple fox again. It trotted over to Hansen and started rubbing his head against Hansen's legs again, just like he used to. Hansen picked the silver fox back up in his arms and said to him, Well done. Bauer was sucking her dummy extra hard. Upon seeing this, she was most certainly not happy. No one dared remain in the area. Quickly, Hansen and his party moved on. They had the silver fox with slight wariness because of the power they had seen him wield. He was quite a scary thing. They looked at Hansen with such strangeness, too. Hansen was bringing it along with them, as if it was a pet. It was difficult to imagine what might happen to a man should they incite the ire of the fox. Hansen had raised the silver fox since its birth, though, and there was no possible chance it would attack him. The only downside to the silver fox's presence was its tendency to keep creatures at bay. While this trade had its benefits, it made trying to hunt a touch more difficult. But, after the golden bug was chased off with its injuries, it did not show up again, thankfully. After another two weeks of travel, the group stumbled across humans. There were three of them, and they seemed to be collecting grass. At the sight of them, the group was made extremely happy. 
If there were humans there, it might mean that there was a human shelter nearby. When the three people saw Hansen, they too looked happy. And without delay, both groups met up for a chat. This is not a human shelter. Shin Hu was disappointed. The eldest man amongst the three was a fellow called Zhao Xian. He told them, there aren't many humans here, but we belong to a royal spirit shelter. It's called the Sword Furnace Shelter. Lin He said, are there any other human shelters around? Zhao Xian regretfully informed them, no, this area is under the control of spirits. It would be best if you return wherever you came from, lest the spirit become aware of your presence. Lin He and Lin Weiwei looked at each other. They were saddened, upon hearing they had still not reached a location where they might safely settle down. Hansen asked, Do you know of a place called Thorn Forest? Hansen needed to know where he was, in order to let Moment Queen move the shelter. They all shook their heads, much to Hansen's disappointment. Immediately, he asked a follow-up question. Do you know if there is a king-class shelter nearby? Everyone's eyes lit up, upon hearing this question. If there was no king-class shelter, there was a chance they could claim the royal shelter for themselves. They most certainly had enough power, between Han Sin and his silver fox. Zhao Xian shook his head and informed them, I only know this is a royal shelter, and it's fairly remote. I don't believe there are any other shelters in the immediate vicinity. Brother Han, let's do this, Jin Hu and a few others said. It had been too long since any of them had gone to the Alliance, and they all wanted the opportunity to see their family and friends again. Uncle San and Weiwei, what do you think? Hansen asked. Go ahead. If this doesn't work out in the long run, we can retreat to the Alliance forever. Lin He spoke with hefty gravity. If we let this opportunity pass us by, who knows when our next chance at a place of sanctuary will be? Lin Weiwei said. Zhao Xian looked at the party in shock, and he asked, What are you guys talking about? We are talking about becoming the new owners of Sword Furnace Shelter, Hansen answered. No. Even if you do take down this shelter, it ultimately belongs to Sword Palace Shelter. If they send reinforcements here, Zhao Xian quickly told them. Then I'll deal with them and take Sword Palace Shelter for myself, as well. Hansen spoke calmly, with perfect confidence. Chapter 1024 Holy Sword Emperor Brother Zhao, do you think they can do what they say they can? Zhao Xian and the others hid amongst some bushes. While they watched Hansen, the youngest of the three asked Zhao Xian the question. They sound confident, so they definitely possess some manner of strength. But even if they can take down this royal shelter, I'm not sure they have the strength to take down Sword Palace Shelter. Zhao Xian paused for a minute, and then said, Still, for now, if they can just manage to break the Spirit Stone here in Sword Furnace Shelter, we'll be free. Then let us hope for the best, and pray they are successful, the young man said, his eyes also resting on Han Sr. The three of them held their hands and prayed after this. If the group was not successful in liberating the shelter, their betrayal might later be found out. If it was, then the three of them who were under contract would most assuredly be given a torturous death. After Han Sin and his people entered the shelter, the noise of explosions, clanging weaponry, and the shrieks and war cries of battle sounded from within the walls. The three of them sweated in anticipation. It didn't last for very long. And after a short while of audible fighting, the city fell silent. Brother Zhao, why is it all quiet? Were they all killed? The young man asked. Updated by Novelful, calm. I don't think so. Zhao Xian wasn't entirely sure. It was strange, though, they had only been inside for a short while, so how could the battle have come to an end so soon? The fear of the group being unsuccessful lingered on the minds of the three, and the idea that Hansen might have already conquered the shelter in such a short time seemed too silly for them to even consider. All of a sudden, a swordsman appeared from out of the gate. His build was heavy, and they recognized his figure all too well. It was a spirit of sword furnished shelter. We are done for, Zhao Xian quietly muttered. He hadn't expected them to be defeated so soon. The two young men had hoped, more than anything, to return to the Alliance if they had been freed. But now? They didn't think that was happening anytime soon. But then, after watching the spirit with bated breath, the tension in their contorted expressions loosened. They couldn't believe it. Another person came out from behind the gates of the shelter, and as he stepped past, the spirit moved aside like a servant. When Zhao Xian squinted to take a better look, that person was the young man who had told them his people could take the shelter and give them back their freedom. The royal spirit is obeying him? 
Zhao Xian looked amazed. How could he have achieved all that so quickly? The young man was in awe. Hansen bid for the three to emerge from the bushes and enter the shelter. After coming inside, they were able to confirm that Hansen had indeed conquered the shelter and asserted control. The bodies of slain creatures were strewn about everywhere. The shelter had been populated with a large sum of mutant creatures, but now they were all dead. Who are you people? Zhao Xian asked in shock. If they possessed the power to Osozali bring down Sword Furnace Shelter, they couldn't have been an ordinary bunch of adventurers. You aren't aware of what President Ji's son-in-law looks like? Shen Hu smiled. You are Hansen. The young person exclaimed with much glee. Zhao Xian had been in the Third God Sanctuary for far too long, though, so the name Hansen didn't ring any bells. But now, they could all use the teleporter. It had been many years since Zhao Xian had been to the Alliance. He had a lot of catching up to do. Lin He and his group were supposed to stay for a while and protect the shelter, but Hansen allowed them to return first. With the Silver Fox and Bower there, even if Sword Palace Shelter came quickly for retribution, there'd be little the other royal shelter could do against the combined might of those two. Hansen gave them their places and explained to them what should be done in the event hostile forces came to the shelter. Then, he too returned to the Alliance. It had been a while since he was last in touch with his mother and Ji Yan Ran, and so he sought to allay any fears they may have had for his well-being. Inside a giant city, one that sat in the center of the glorious emerald expanses, many royal spirits had come together for a meeting. The leader amongst them wore green-plated armor, and he spoke to them all. A swordsman spirit approached another royal spirit and whispered in his ear. When he heard the whispered words, the spirit's face changed. My son, what is wrong? Holy Sword Emperor asked. Ghost Sword was only just a royal spirit. He hadn't become a king spirit yet but he was the strongest of Holy Sword Emperor's sons. With the possibility that, in time, he might be able to become a king spirit, his father loved him dearly. Father, a few humans stormed Sword Furnace Shelter and took it from me. We should send reinforcements to slay them, Ghost Sword said, then gestured to the swordsman, who promptly left. Okay, then. Holy Sword Emperor did not think this matter was too concerning. In that place, only super creatures could pose a threat to them. Humans were weaklings, and not a force worth worrying about. Mostly, though, Holy Sword Emperor's placid reaction to the news was because he was in a good mood. He had just been the recipient of a treasure. It was given to him by an emperor spirit from Phoenix Desert. With that treasure, he had a chance of transcending his own class to that of an emperor. The power of an emperor was not far off that of a berserk super creature, and it was half a tier higher than that of a king spirit. Spirits that had opened ten gene locks mostly moved on to the fourth god sanctuary. The treasure he had received was from an emperor spirit that had gone to the fourth god sanctuary. It was a very beneficial gift for spirits such as Holy Sword Emperor. He hadn't previously hoped he could achieve ten open gene locks, but now he did. A swordsman approached Ghost Sword and whispered to him again. Upon hearing what the messenger said, his face turned green. He stood up. Chapter 1025 goodbye to Silver Fox. After a time spent in the Alliance, Hansen returned to the sanctuary. As soon as he arrived, Bauer leapt up to kiss his cheek and say, Father, I missed you. I missed you too. Hansen kissed her and then went off, looking for the Silver Fox. Hansen used his Dong Shen aura and found the fox lying atop the shelter's ramparts, just above the gate. Hansen took Bauer with him to where the Silver Fox was and said, Little Silver, I'm back. There is no need to guard so fiercely anymore. The Silver Fox just continued staring in the direction he had been. Hansen could tell the Silver Fox was concerned about something, but all that did was make Hansen worry, too. Hansen frowned. Ghost Mountain was in the direction the Silver Fox faced. Caringly, Hansen wanted to stroke the Silver Fox's head and ask him, Do you miss your friends? Hansen believed the Silver Fox might have missed the fellow creatures back on Ghost Mountain as they had treated him well for a long time. Before he could receive a response, though, Hansen's attention was snatched by the sudden sound of a cry. It came from Ghost Mountain. The Silver Fox stood up in alarm, paying extra attention to the cry. He approached Hansen's legs and rubbed his head against them. Acknowledging something was wrong, Hansen stroked the Silver Fox's face and asked, What is it? Gently, the Silver Fox crooned as an answer. He jumped up, licked Hansen's cheek, and then jumped off of the shelter's wall. 
The silver fox started to run in the direction of Ghost Mountain, but as it went, it repeatedly looked back at Han Sr. Hansen did not delay in going after the silver fox, but Little Silver kept on howling back at Hansen, who sought to give chase, as if he was telling Hansen to stay back and not follow him back to Ghost Mountain. What's wrong, Little Silver? You can tell me. Hansen did not heed the silver fox's warnings and continued pursuing him. Bauer was left behind in the meantime, up on the ramparts of the shelter. Hansen thought about why the silver fox might not have come to see him in the very beginning when he was up on Ghost Mountain. The silver fox had called off the super creature wolf. It was strange how he had only shown up after they exited the mountain. Hell, the silver fox tried to warn Hansen off and get him to stop following. Little silver, is someone trying to bully you? Are you being threatened? What is that far off cry? Hansen increased his speed to catch up with the silver fox. Although Little Silver was not a human, he was a creature Hansen had raised since its birth. At one point, the Silver Fox was his most trusted ally and sidekick. He was family to Hansen, and he couldn't just let the fox run off into danger. It was okay if the Silver Fox wanted to go back there to be with the creatures. Hansen wouldn't have forced him to stay with him, if that was the concern. But if something was forcing the Silver Fox to do something against his will, Hansen wouldn't stand for it. Little Silver slowed down due to Han Sin's repeated calls, but the crying noise from Ghost Mountain started up again. Little Silver barked at Han Sin, and then, with a bolt of lightning, ran off. The Silver Fox was incredibly quick, and Han Sin had no chance of following him. The creature was going to leave his range of vision in no time. With eight gene locks open, though, Han Sin did his best to try and catch up. He had fallen behind, yes, but he still continued on his way to Ghost Mountain. That was where the silver fox was headed, after all. The silver fox heard the upset howling again and stopped in his tracks. Seeing him stop in the distance put a smile back on Hansen's face. But as he neared the silver fox again, and was close to catching up, little silver electrified him. The silver fox barked at Hansen, commanding that he stop following. Bringing himself back up to his feet, Hansen was not mad at his behavior. He said, if you're willingly going back, I won't stop you. But if someone is making you do something against your own will, I'm not leaving your side. Boom. The silver fox shot Hansen with another bolt of lightning. But after, he looked a little remorseful. He seemed to have been touched by Hansen's words, despite his initial reaction. Shrugging off the pain, Hansen continued to approach the silver fox. Little silver couldn't bring himself to shock Hansen the third time, so he just barked, ran, and leapt up into Hansen's chest. Little Silver, I don't want you to leave me. Hansen stroked the Silver Fox's head with much love. Little Silver licked his dear master's cheeks and barked quietly, as if he wished to speak with him in a common language. But suddenly, the Silver Fox jumped away from Hansen and made all his first stand on end. Hansen suddenly felt a terrible presence drawing near. Turning to take a look at where it was coming from, he saw a black shadow approaching them from across the field. The shadow was very slow but every step made Hansen feel as if the very world was under threat. It was as if the world was shrinking, the nearer it drew. Hansen could sense a terrifying power residing within that black shadow. Now, Hansen believed he understood the reason why the silver fox had not revealed his presence as soon as he probably wanted to. It wasn't that the silver fox did not want to be with Hansen, it was this shadow that was stopping him. He only revealed himself when he did because it had been a life and death moment for Han Senator. The assault of those bugs out on the plains could have ended poorly for all the humans involved. Staring at the scary shadow, Hansen thought even the intimidation of the snake paled in comparison to it. Chapter 1026 You Deserve It When the shadow arrived, it felt as if the entire expanse had been veiled with a cloak of darkness. The creature was a fox. It was different than the silver fox not only in that its coat was black, but it had a look of murder in its eyes. It was evil. It had nine tails that wagged strangely, and it gave the illusion of a warped dimension. The nine-tailed fox approached like a demon, and its oppressive appearance made Hansen feel he could drop to the ground at any given moment. The eyes of the phantom fox were frightening. The sockets were where they should have been, but they were empty. Sunken and empty. The fox looked at Hansen, and as it did, he felt a weight of doom press on his shoulders. The tyrannical feelings it exuded were suffocating, so much so, Hansen felt short of breath. Hansen did not have an eighth sense, 
but he knew all too well that the fox wanted to murder him. He felt as if he was encountering a twisted, vengeful ghost from the beyond. And it was then that it hit him. Perhaps there was a reason the area was called Ghost Mountain. Is this why Ghost Mountain is called Ghost Mountain? Is it because of this ghost-like fox? Hansen mulled to himself. Howl. The silver fox cried out at the ghost fox, as if it was begging it to let Hansen walk away. But it seemed as if the ghost fox did not care. It looked furious. Undoubtedly angry Hansen had taken the silver fox away from it. Seeing the ghost fox approach nearer and nearer, Little Silver straightened his hair with a charge of electricity. He growled at the ghost fox, as if he was telling it to stay away. The ghost fox was irritated by Little Silver's behavior, and it let out a horrid shriek. After it was over, its tail sprang outwards to attack Han Sr. The silver fox was shocked, so it unleashed a barrage of silver lightning at the ghost fox in retaliation. Strangely, the lightning flashed through the body of the ghost fox and only scorched the ground behind it. It was as if the ghost fox was truly a ghost. The silver fox unleashed more and more lightning, each discharge being stronger than the last. Try as he might, though, not a single one impacted or dealt damage to the shape of the foe that opposed them. Hansen turned into a phoenix and leapt towards the ghost fox. But after unleashing a number of attacks, nothing touched the ghost fox. Hansen felt like cowering in the ghost's intimidating shadow. Suddenly, Hansen behaved as if he was possessed. Black smoke rose from his flames, and his eyes turned black as well. Hansen's hands rose up of their own accord and placed themselves on his own neck. Then, he vigorously tried to strangle himself. You deserve it. Ha uh ha. -huh. Hansen squeezed his own neck with tremendous strength, wheezing out a cackle whenever he could. He had gone psychotic. A tick-tick sound came from the neck, and it sounded as if it was going to snap any second beneath the horrid pressure that was being put upon it. Hansen had never had to deal with a power such as this before. Only his consciousness was free. Everything else about him was under the control of the ghost fox who had disappeared into him. The silver fox howled and fried over what had happened to his master. He couldn't do anything to save him, and he could only run around in circles. The ghost fox had possessed Hansen, and even though it was vulnerable now, if he attacked, he'd be harming his master. Little Silver's eyes turned red and it began kowtowing before the ghost fox. I told you, I'd grant him safe passage across Ghost Mountain, only if you remain my slave. You broke your end of the bargain, and now, he has to die. Hansen's mouth spoke the words that the ghost fox desired, and did so with a spooky, empty tone that was devoid of all emotion. The silver fox had no idea what to do. He didn't know if there was anything he could do. All he did was beg and beg for the safety of his master. Little Silver don't beg. He isn't worthy enough to be your master. Suddenly, Hansen had managed to regain some control. The ghost fox was surprised at the resilience of its host. It had never expected that a possessed human could summon the will to regain command of their voice. Not even super creatures could resist the powers of the ghost fox, so how a human had managed to do so is unfathomable. To the ghost fox, the 1,700 fitness the human possessed was incredibly weak. Not wanting to risk him regaining any more control, the ghost fox decided to kill him outright. The ghost fox strengthened its power, but strangely, it could not corrupt any more of Hansen's body. A holy light came out from Hansen, and it seemed to be purifying and negating the effects of the black smoke. This humble light grew, until the darkness that surrounded him was wholly vanquished. In Posse, the ghost fox sought to squeal a few words using Hansen's mouth, but his attempt was cut short by the severing of the corruption. Hansen's black hair became a bright, stunning white gown, and it grew so long that it brushed the emerald grass. His body was beaming with a holy light. The Nine-Gene Lock Super King spirit body was increasing in strength and magnitude. The dark presence in him was ejected, and the form of the ghost fox returned. It looked at Hansen in utter shock. How dare you make little silver cry? You know what? You deserve it. Hansen's eyes burned with the brightness of stars. A fist, imbued with the same power, was thrown towards the wretched ghost fox. Chapter 1027 Killing Ninetail Ghost Fox The ghost fox squealed as if it was trying to say, I am indestructible, you are nothing. But in the next second, Hansen's mighty fist was burying itself deep into the ghost fox's face. It annihilated the composure of its shadowy form and sent the beast flying. The ghost fox wore an expression of complete incomprehension. It couldn't believe a human had actually managed to punch it. 
Hansen did not hesitate for one second, though. His anger was like the sudden eruption of a volcano, and he moved over to deliver follow-up blows. Approaching the fox, his arm swung wildly. Ping. Ping. Hansen punched the nine-tailed fox repeatedly. Blood squirted out with each brutish impact like flowers in the air. The ghost fox was in shock at how the tables had turned on it. Hansen was an oppressive tyrant, standing in front of it, beating it senseless. The crazy man's barrage of punches ruined its body into a sickly, disfigured mess. All it could do in response was scream, shriek, and squeal in agony and fright. Die. 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 Hansen's fists were faster than any I could track. Catch up. A fist opened up and grabbed one of the fox's tails. It ripped the tail off and cast it away like some joke. The nine-tailed fox could not hold back its pain cries. It tried to raise its claws in a hopeless defense, thinking it might be able to get away. But Hansen's fists of fury were too powerful. The nails and paws were shattered with no additional effort, and then he teleported in front of the fox's face. Catcha! Hansen grabbed the fox by the neck and reached around for another one of its tails. Effortlessly, another tail was torn from its flesh. The ghost fox was in shock. It had resided on the mountain for countless years, but it had never been this scared before. Hansen was like a demon. Its ghost body was useless against the raging madman. The fox couldn't fathom trying to fight back anymore, and all it wanted to do was run off and retreat to some cave where it could lick its wounds. Every step it tried to take, Hansen was there with it. Another tail was ripped off. Every time a tail was ripped off, it lost its shadowy, phantom-like illusion. When it hit the ground, it was an average, fluffy fox tail. Hansen chased the fox for 300 miles. Over the course of this distance, the ghost fox was beaten until it continuously spilled blood from its mouth and countless wounds checkered its body. Every now and again, a tail was ripped off and cast away, too. When Hansen reached the last tail, the ghost fox no longer looked like it had before. It had lost its translucent look and simply became a frail, beaten, black fox. With Taya, Hansen did not show any remorse or mercy. He cut the head of the fox clean off from a strike that started low. The upward momentum sent it barreling through the air. Slash update by Novelful, calm. The ghost fox Hans sound had been savagely beating on was killed then and there. It wasn't in any particularly flashy fashion, just a clean, simple severing of its head. Super creature nine tail ghost fox killed. No beast soul gained. Consume its flesh to gain 0 to 10 super geno points randomly. You may also collect the life geno essence. After killing the nine tail fox, Hansen exited his super king spirit mode. It was incredibly draining on him, and he had been sapped of all strength. Now, he could barely lift a finger. His bones felt like glass, as if they were fragile and ready to shatter. His flesh felt stressed as if the entire composition of his body had been stretched. He was like butter, scraped over too much bread. His life force was weak now. It took him a whole hour of Super King Spirit Mode to kill the fox. If he hadn't figured out how to kill it by tearing off its tails, he wouldn't have been able to finish it off. The reason Hansen was able to make a comeback and kill it, though, was all down to the ghost fox's underestimation of his power. If the fox had not tried to possess and toy with him for a while, he could have been outright killed before being given the opportunity to fight back. If the fox had tried to kill him properly, it all would have been over for him. Hansen had more than a few tricks up his sleeve, and the ghost fox had no idea he was capable of unleashing such vast amounts of power. The fox had been in charge of that mountain for countless ages. By killing the master of that massive region, it finally made him realize just how powerful and fortuitous he was to possess a super king spirit body. This hurts way too much. Whichever way Hansen chose to move, it felt as if he was pressing his body against a thousand knives. The silver fox had done nothing for a while. He had only followed Hansen, staring at him with his mouth agape. The ghost fox had been wickedly powerful for many years, and heaven knew how many good things it had eaten over the course of its time as supreme commander of Ghost Mountain. A super creature that had reached its ninth tier would most certainly not have been able to kill it. The fact that it was so far ahead of every other creature there was why it had been in charge. Even the silver fox had been forced to become its slave. No one could have expected it to have been so simply killed by a human like that. Hansen summoned Thorn Baron, asking her to bring the fox's corpse with her. Back in the shelter, he rested the following day and night. His body had moderately improved, 
but he was still very weak, and there'd be a while to go before he could make a full recovery. Not even the Silver Fox's powers of healing were enough to fix him. Hansen had tried to use his own holy light to heal himself, but it was futile. It seemed as if only time possessed what it took to recover, this time. The Silver Fox brought out the dragon saliva Hansen had been gifted. After eating a bit, Hansen felt much better. Still, with not much going on, Hansen thought it'd be a waste to eat it now. Its recovery benefits could prove very useful in the future. Hansen dug up the life geno essence. The silver fox circled him as he did so. With the saliva drooling from his mouth, it was obvious little silver wanted some. With a wry smile, Hansen gave the life geno essence to the silver fox. He barked after accepting it, then ran off to enjoy it. After trying to eat some of the ghost fox's tail, Hansen found it to be inedible. So, he summoned the disloyal knight and got him to eat it. The disloyal knight gobbled up all the meat it could and was then sent back to the Sea of Soul. This time, it began to shine with a green light. It was evolving. Chapter 1028 Ghost Sword Comes Now that the ghost fox had been slain, Hansen believed he could ransack Ghost Mountain alongside Little Silver. But the Silver Fox, after receiving the life geno essence, disappeared for a few days. Hansen was still awfully weak and was in no condition for solo travel. He thought the silver fox might have gone to the ghost fox's den, but Hansen had no idea where that might have been. Since it was too dangerous for him to venture there in such a weak state of body, he didn't dare leave the shelter. After a period of rest and recovery, Hansen found himself nearing full recuperation. But just as he was, he was alerted to the nearby presence of a swathe of angry creatures and spirits. The leader was clad in black iron armor, and he wielded a black iron greatsword. He rode atop a lion, whose fur was also black. Many powerful creatures and spirits trailed behind him, as awake. They had come to the front of the shelter once before, but this was while Hansen was back in the Alliance. The Silver Fox had been there at the time, and he managed to ward them off by incinerating a few. Learning a high number of creatures and spirits had come for them, Lin He and Lin Weiwei returned to the Alliance so they could fetch Han Sr. After returning to the sanctuary, Hansen picked up Bauer and ascended one of the shelter's watchtowers. There, he used his Dongshan aura to measure the strength of those that sought to oppose him. Amongst the collective that had now gathered in front of the shelter, Hansen espied the presence of a small sacred blood creature that looked like a pigeon. This pleased him. Sacred blood creatures that were small in size were quite a rarity. He could finish that pigeon in one sitting, easy. There were a few other sacred blood creatures there as well but they were too big and none tickled his fancy in particular. The second smallest was the black lion, but a preliminary examination suggested it would be inedible for him. Contemptible humans, how dare you assault and claim my shelter for your own? Lay down your arms and submit to slavery and I will spare your lives. This is the only offer for such mercy you will receive, Ghost Sword Prince coldly proclaimed. What do we do? Should we return to the Alliance? Zhao Xian's face seemed disturbed. Don't worry, it's only a royal spirit. After that, Hansen turned his head to address the spirit below. He said, HM, this seems rote. How about we spice things up with a duel? If you defeat me, then by all means, enslave us all. Fine, Ghost Sword Prince agreed. Hansen had embarrassed him, directly in front of his father, no less. Killing them all in a crude siege would have been too simple for Ghost Sword Prince, so a duel for the regaining of the honor he thought he had lost was a concept he rather enjoyed. Ghost Sword did not think much of humans. He thought they weren't very powerful, due to most of the human population being mere slaves in the Third God Sanctuary. And he wasn't entirely wrong. Humans had become slaves to the overwhelming strength of spirits all across the Third God Sanctuary, and humans of some renown were in very short supply. Slash update by Novelful, com. Luo Haiteng was a human of renown, but his time had come and gone. Hansen drew his Taya sword and leapt down to the grassy fields below. He said, Come on, show me what you've got. No human could talk to him like that. Or so he thought. Being addressed in such a burrish fashion enraged him, so he spared no time in trying to swing his black iron great sword down on Hans Sr. It was a Geno weapon he wielded. It might not have had the glow or sheen that was typical of such weaponry but it had a dark and imposing figure. The sword itself looked powerful and unbreakable. Dong. Hansen used his blood pulse sutra to perform a guard with Taya. 
The force that came down on the sword was tremendous, and it knocked Hansen back about ten feet. Still, Taya was left without a scratch. You must have a death wish to willingly fight one such as I. After Ghost Sword Prince finished speaking, he lunged forward for another strike. Hansen knew his power was weaker than the prince's, who seemed reliant on the use of raw, physical damage. But since that was only one element of the fight, it didn't concern him. Hansen could have used Super King Spirit Mode, but he didn't want to. He thought it'd be a waste of time and strength, using it on a foe he didn't deem worthy enough to be the recipient of its might. Hansen used Arrow and Double Fly, and attacked like a dive-bombing phoenix. Sword Ghost's power was no joke, and each strike could have proven fatal if they met with their target. Fortunately, Hansen was able to dodge each and every one, using stealth to insert hits of his own. Ghost Sword Prince felt as if he was doing battle with the air. Try as he might, he only broke the sky, he couldn't touch Hansen. Hansen was silent the entire time, though. He was focused right now, and he was in the zone, entirely concentrated on honing and improving the skills he employed to fight the spirit. It was difficult to find an opponent that was of a similar level as him, but here one was. If Hansen had to take a guess, he'd assume the spirit had managed to unlock eight gene locks. He was nigh the perfect opponent to train and spar with. Weiwei, it looks like Hansen can make use of both Heavenly Go and Seven Twist, Lin He said, correctly determining what moves Hansen was making use of. Lin Weiwei nodded, saying, he learned Heavenly Go from Queen. As for Seven Twist, I have no idea where you learned that or from whom. Lin He, as he continued to watch, said, Little Han is quite a talented young chap. Even though he is open one gene lock less than the spirit he battles with, he can keep up just fine and surpass his opponent. Hansen is clearly winning. He really is the best of the best. Where did that fox go? I wonder. Lin Weiwei was worried about Ghost Sword Prince not keeping to his promise if Hansen won the fight. If the creatures in his command still attacked, she thought the fox would be of great service to them. The fox isn't here, and if that spirit does not stay true to his word and attacks us anyway, I'm not entirely sure we can hold this place. Chen Hu had the same worry. And just as Chen Hu said this, Ghost Sword Prince commanded his followers to commence an attack on the shelter. Chapter 1029 Striking Ghost Sword Hansen wished to spar with Ghost Sword Prince for a while longer, but the snake had commanded his troops to commence an attack on the shelter. Hansen opened his eighth gene lock, which made Taya gleam with a dark purple light and look like calcified blood. He had managed to collect many sacred geno points up to this point, so he'd be able to last a while longer. Taya's blade swung right before Ghost Sword's face. And then, with a sudden blaze of additional speed, Hansen kicked things up a notch. His fierce blade accelerated, forcing Ghost Sword to raise his great sword and attempt to block. Dong! But the great sword did nothing to repel Taya. In an instant, the mighty great sword was broken. Taya continued its forward thrust directly towards Ghost Sword's chest. Taya was an incredibly strong sword but its strength was determined by its wielder. If Hansen wasn't half the man he was, the blade's strength would most likely have been similar to Z-Steel. If you were a weak person, Taya would have been useless. The Blood Pulse Sutra imbued the blade with the power of blood, and it bolstered its strength by a huge degree. It lent it the mighty force that drove the current attack. Ghost Sword was too pompous to expect such a thing to occur, and so, it was too late for him to evade it. Just as this happened, the pigeon on the spirit's shoulder flashed with a green light. It flew down to shield its master's heart. Awesome. Hansen was made even happier. He had done all this for the sole purpose of killing the creature. Blood sprayed everywhere as the blade severed the bird's head from its neck. Sacred blood creature green falcon killed. No beast soul gained. Consume its flesh to gain 0 to 10 sacred geno points randomly. Ghost sword's disposition only curdled after this, though. Enraged, he drew a long sword to replace his now broken great sword and attacked Hansen madly. Hansen's body looked red, but he did not dodge the attack. Instead, he allowed the long sword to pierce directly into his chest. He didn't fall, though. Instead, he looked cold, as if this had all been predicted beforehand. It was as if the entire fight had been calculated already. He dashed forward and brought himself directly in front of Ghost Sword. This scared Ghost Sword. He had expected to be able to cut Hansen in half, but instead, he felt his own head depart his body. In Hansen's hand, droplets of a red substance dripped from Taya's blood-soaked blade. 
The army that had accompanied Ghost Sword all fled, as he was zapped back to his spirit stone. In the manic scramble of creatures that were tripping over themselves to escape, Lin He and a few others ran out to nab a few easy kills. They had never been so happy. They used to be terrified of fighting, and they had only just escaped the coming of a spirit that sought to conquer them and had, in fact, succeeded. It was a great relief to see victory achieved so easily. In the past, it took a large amount of planning with a high volume of people to secure a win, but this was swift and only required the help of a few individuals. It was unbelievable. At midnight, in Holy Sword Shelter, a man pounded a stone door with one hand, pulled a torch in the other. The door opened, and the man went inside and closed it behind him. Brother Seven, why are you here? A bearded man asked. Brother Seven set the torch in a wall mount, and with much excitement, said, Jiwen howled. Holy Sword Emperor was just yelling at his son. The one he proclaims to love so much? Qin Jiwen Hao asked. Yes, that one. He failed in trying to reclaim his own shelter. Brother Seven said. Which spirit was able to beat a spirit that has eight of his gene locks open? Qin Jiwen Hao wondered. It's not even a spirit. It was a human. It was one of us. Brother Seven couldn't quell the giddy excitement that drenched his speech. Are you serious? How is such a thing possible? Qin Jiwen Hao's facial expression suggested that he was struggling to believe what he had just been told. Brother Seven, finally starting to get a grip on his composure, explained, I don't know, but this actually happened. I got the story from the horse's mouth. I heard Ghost Sword talk about it himself. That is good news then. Finally, humanity seems to be accomplishing something in this place. I must tell you though, this sounds like a person I'd very much like to meet, Qin Jiwen Hao said. I'm glad you say that, for I would very much like you to go meet with this person, Brother Seven said. How can I even arrange such a meeting? Qin Jiwen Hao is stuck in the shelter, unable to leave. I have an idea, but they are probably unaware of Holy Sword Emperor and what he is capable of. We have to warn this man and the people that accompany him. Brother Seven paused and then went on to say, Holy Sword Emperor is on his way to Phoenix Desert. This is our window of opportunity to act. Now is the time we would do best to warn them. But I can't leave, Qin Jiwen Hao said. I have a method, a way in which you can leave. But if you are caught, you will be in grave danger. Brother Seven now spoke with a tone of dark gravitas. Danger means nothing to me if it enables me to warn others and possibly save them, Qin Jiwen Hao said with pride. Brother Seven nodded and went on to explain his plan. And then he said, I must accompany Holy Sword Emperor. If you make it back to the Alliance, Tell my wife I cannot return the favor. Qin Jiwen Hao looked shocked and asked, Is he going to Emperor Mountain? Yes, he can go there now with the gift he was given. Brother Seven now possessed a wry smile. Qin Jiwen Hao quickly suggested, Brother Seven, come with me. Perhaps we can return to the Alliance together? But Brother Seven shook his head and said, You have to do this alone. You have a higher chance of making it by flying solo. If I come with you, they'll immediately come after me and we'll both be killed. Qin Jiwen Hao wished to say something, but Brother Seven interrupted him and said, When you find these people, tell them to return to the Alliance. Otherwise, they'll never be given the chance to again. Brother Seven provided a map to Qin Jiwen Hao and said, This is a map I have drawn. I have worked on it for many years, and it is done from memory. It includes the location of God Mountain. If humanity ever goes for a full-blown war with spirits one day, this may be of great service. Brother Seven spoke as if he'd be dying soon, and he gave many of his secret possessions to Qin Jiwen Hao. Chapter 1030 Daddy is Popular Han Sen, browsing the aisles of the supermarket, held Bauer in his arms. He had spent so much time in the sanctuary, returning to the conveniences of civilization made for a nice change of pace. Updated by Novel Full, Calm, Bauer and Han Sen each had an ice cream, and they were delicious. Teacher Chu, Lanchi? Hansen caught sight of two people who were familiar to him. One of them was a very elegant woman. Her full name was Chu Wanga, and she was a lecturer at St. Paul College. The other woman was Chu Lanchi, who Hansen had met in the Third God Sanctuary. Hansen? They were both quite surprised. Hansen was also surprised, especially at seeing them both together. They seemed rather close with each other. You two are good friends? Hansen guessed, unsure of the exact nature of their relationship. Lanchi is my big sister. I didn't realize that you knew her. Chu Wanga smiled. 
When I first came to the Third God Sanctuary, Lanshi helped me out a lot. I just didn't expect you both to be sisters. Hansen smiled. Chu Lanshi blushed and said, Are you sure it was I who helped you? It was thanks to you that Chu Ming and I were able to return here. Chu Wanga chimed in to say, Didn't you tell me it was San Mu who helped you? I am San Mu. Hansen smiled. Come to my home for dinner tonight, then. Our parents would really like to meet, greet, and thank the person who saved my sister, Chuwanga said. There is no need for that, Hansen said. I have wanted to do this for a long time. So, if you really aren't busy, I would much appreciate it if we could have a get-together, Chulanchi pleaded. All right, then. They had endured many hardships together, so Hansen wasn't entirely against joining her for a night. Is that your daughter, by the way? She's cute, Chuwanga asked. Bala? No, she's just a humanoid pet beast soul. I treat her as if she was my daughter, though. Hansen had started to use that as an explanation for what Bauer was, masking her true, enigmatic identity. If it became known that Bauer was a creature of sorts, one that could actually come to the Alliance, people would undoubtedly freak out. A ruckus would ensue, all with Hansen back in the limelight again. If there were other creatures that could come to the Alliance, things would be far more dangerous for humans. And what's more, he feared Bauer might be taken away by the government if her nature was exposed. As such, he kept it a secret. That must be quite rare. They looked at Bao with much surprise. Bao reached out and said, Beautiful Annies, hug me. Immediately, they were both smitten with Bao. They did not mind that it was a pet beast soul, as they had been told, and were keen to treat it like any ordinary baby. While Bao could be sweet and had the naivety of an actual child, after the time he had spent with her in the sanctuary, Hansen had come to know that Bauer had an evil streak within her. She wasn't entirely innocent. Bauer could even command Moment Queen to do things for her. After Bauer's introduction to Chu Lanshi and Chu Wanga, the baby was able to obtain many things Hansen usually forbade. She had put on a front of being as adorable as possible, getting the two she referred to as Annie's to buy her many things. Much of this stuff was just junk food. Hansen thought it was a waste, buying her such food. He believed it would be useless for her development. Furthermore, Hansen didn't like spending too much, either. And with Bauer's belly being like a black hole, she could eat and eat and never be satisfied. He couldn't risk spoiling her. But on this day, those two girls greatly enjoyed feeding Bauer whatever she requested. Have you been abusing her? Why is she so hungry? Chu Wanga stared at Hansen with trepidation. Hansen shrugged and thought to himself, it's all fun, lollipops, and kisses for now. If only you had to take care of her for a few days, you'd understand how difficult she is to take care of. After their time shopping was over, Chuwanga drove Hansen and Bauer to their house. Their parents greeted Hansen very passionately. They were so grateful Hansen had been able to deliver Chu Lanchi back to the Alliance without harm, after her many-year absence. While Hansen was in deep discussion with her parents, Chu Lanchi took Bauer up to her room. Bauer, does this dress look good on me? Chu Lanchi asked, after placing Bauer on her bed. No, you're too old, Bauer said, with squinted eyes. Chu Lanchi froze, utterly dazed from the response she had received from a baby. Her attitude was most certainly different than when she was around Han Senator. It was as if her cuteness had entirely evaporated. You are so old. And to wear such old-fashioned clothes, it's no wonder you haven't married yet. You'll never wed anyone if you carry on like this. Bauer spoke with a deep, serious, and rough tone, all while she sucked her dummy. Chulanshi had not expected a pet baby to insult her this way. Bauer placed her little hands below her jaw and said, Yeah, I don't think you'll ever get married. Of course, if you aren't against the concept, I can get my daddy to be your husband for a temporary period of time. You'll just have to buy me good stuff for the duration. Chulanshi was still frozen with her wide eyes staring at Bauer. Bauer seemed to be adding something up with her fingers, and eventually, she said, Daddy is popular, so this is going to cost you at least 200 ice creams. When Hansen was ready to leave, the sisters looked at him strangely. They avoided eye contact and didn't even bid him goodbye. But before they left, Chulanchi gave a lot of food to Bauer. Bauer, did you do something to offend your two Annies? Hansen asked. I behaved, Bauer said as she munched on jelly. Hansen went home to rest for the next two days, but Lin Weiwei sent him a message. It told him that a person had come to the shelter and that he would like to meet Hansen in the virtual community. 